welcome back to the channel. My name is Randa and today we are going to be doing our weekly floss tube video. This might be a tad shorter than usual, uh, partially because I don't have, I mean I do have stuff to show you but I don't think I have a ton to show you and also that I am on a time crunch that in less than an hour I need to leave for therapy so we're on a time limit here. So, <laughs> um, let me see. I've been doing lots of stitching. Uh, less in terms of buying, but I do have some things to show you. And continuing to live in true random form of running around like a chicken with my head cut off every freaking day. Yeah, it's great. Uh-huh. Awesome. Anyway, <laughs> um, let me think. So, let's start with a whip update, I guess. Here is what we are working on. Look, isn't it coming along so good? Yes. I am working on Nora Corbett's Raven. I almost said Raven Queen. Raven. Um, I got this from 123Stitch. That is mm, glare. That is what it'll look like when it is complete. This is part of her Bewitching Pixies series. Say that 17 times fast. And like I said, this is called Raven. Um, so if you see... I'm almost down to the bottom of her dress. You've got most of her cape done. And then once I'm down all the way to the bottom of her dress, I'll start working up to the rest of it. But like this thing's gonna be decently big. This is stitched two over one on a 32 count milk chocolate linen by Witchelt. I have it in a little Q snap here right now. This is an eight by eight Q snap. I finally figured out what size it is. Um, and it fits in my floss buddy in case you're curious. Uh, this is a needle minder. I believe it's from Galloway's Gallery who has very sadly shut down, but that's who it's from. Um, and yeah, this is like, what, week three, week two on this project and I'm almost halfway done. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, so that's that. I have all of my floss here in my floss buddy. You guys know how I feel about these. Um, this is the new one that just came in the in the mail. You have seen this a little bit in my stitching chat that I did earlier this week. But this is, I pulled everything out so that you could see. This is the new floss buddy that I got. It's blue and it has these little deers all over it. And then it has white felt on the back. This is a 45 pocket. These are my favorite ones because I like having ample amount of pockets and also for my haids, um, I need all 45 because there's 90 colors. I'm going to double up in each one. And also because it allows this pocket back here to be a really good size so that um, I can fit everything in there. That I can fit a Q-snap in here, an 8x8 Q-snap, and I can fit all my supplies. I can fit an 8x8 Q-snap snugly in here, but it does fit. And then I can fit a hoop very easily. I have a, like a, I don't know, maybe like a five or six inch hoop. It fits really easily in there. And if you had a situation like this where you didn't really have anything in the back and you don't have all the floss filled up, you could fold it in half like that. Usually it doesn't fold like that for me, so it just stays flat like this. But that's not a bad size. It's, you know, for me, I basically just use it as a project bag, as if it were any other project bag, and I love it. So this is called a Floss Buddy. These are from a store called Bags Plus on Etsy, run by a really sweet woman named Corinne. I love her. She is a sweet woman. Um, yeah, I am obsessed with these. She hand makes them. I love them so much. Yeah. 10 out of 10 recommend. Definitely go check that out if you're interested in one of these. I have another one coming. I believe I told you guys last week that I had a conversation with her where I was able to get the same, just a floss buddy in the same fabric that I originally had, the one with like the chipmunks and the bunnies and stuff. So excited. That is coming soon. Um, yeah, that's my floss buddy. Love, love, love. And then I use the, for my floss, just in case you're curious, I use plastic bobbins. I get them from Walmart, like, and then I have these little stickers on them. This one says 310. Uh, I got these DMC stickers from Hobby Lobby. I found them at my, in my cross stitch section at, at Hobby Lobby. And so I just label all of the 
bobbins with the DMC color they are. I would, you know, if I had all the money in the world, I would love to get like the pip and chip ones that Stitcherista just got that has the color and the number written on the top. Like it's, that's how they're made is that the bobbins like say it on the bobbin, the DMC number, but I don't have all the money in the world and this works just fine. So <laughs> it's like that, I believe when St Stitcherista said she did it, it was like 200 plus dollars for all of the bobbin. No, no. Sorry, I can't. No, not happening. Just not happening. <laughs> but anyway, that works really great. And those stickers are like $2. And bobbins are, you know, just the... Because absolutely screw the, the cardboard ones. Plastic bobbins. I think I got a pack of like 80 of them for like 5 bucks. Like, this is the cheap way to do it. So, and I really like it. So that is a whip update. I think it's coming along really good. I am not using beads in this. Everything else is called for um, except for the beads. Instead of beads, I'm doing French knots. I don't know if you can see them right here in the swirls and then there's a few of them up here. I'm not the best. I'm noticing I'm getting better at them as I get down, uh, that I'm getting more practice with French knots and they're looking better, but I still think that they look pretty good in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, I'll probably continue doing that. I don't think French knots are as bad as everybody makes them out to be. They can be a pain in the ass, but they're not that bad. So I have like a tiny bit of her dress left, like a row or two, row and a half maybe of her dress left that then is gonna do her little curly cue at the end here. And then I have one more row left of her like cape thing or something, and then I'm done. And we're moving on to the top. And I told my boyfriend, because when you look at the top of the pattern, so you're going to have like her face and stuff, but you have all of these bats and stuff, right? I'm like having to count to every single one of those bats is going to be a pain in my butt <laughs> because counting on linen is not always the easiest thing to do in the world. I can do it and it's fine, but like, it's going to be a pain in the butt. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, but doing good. I'll just show you. See, doing pretty good. So, very excited with that. Um, plans have changed, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but hopefully I'll have this done in the next two weeks. That's the goal, I think. We'll see. <laughs> because I also have been, I'm still stitching a lot, okay, but I have sort of been going back to at least in the past 24 hours I've been going back to my love of diamond painting that it has been like two weeks since I have diamond painted and so I'm giving myself that time to enjoy my diamond painting because I haven't touched it in so long um but don't worry I'm still stitching <laughs> like definitely still stitching I think I worked on this a little bit last night or a lot of it I think I got like two rows done last night so still working on it don't you worry about a thing uh okay that's whip update. Let's do orders for that have come in this week. So because I found out Galloway's gallery was closed, I had to find um, a place to get needle minders. So I just searched like Christmas needle minders because I wanted some to go with some of the Christmas kits that I plan on doing in a minute. And um, I found some from that I liked from Gina's Unique Boutique. So that's where I ordered these from. And here's what I got. They came in the mail. This little gingerbread man that's like doing the splits or something. I don't know what he's doing, but he's living his best life and I love it. <laughs> and then the second one that I got was these cats in like a coffee mug. These little kittens in a coffee mug and one of them's wearing a Santa hat. And like, yes, I don't know what it says. Oh, it just says Mary Cat at the bottom. If you can read that on the cup, it says Mary Cat. <laughs> and these have extremely strong magnets so very excited about that and then she also threw in this freebie this little snowman and on the side it says Gina's unique needle minders on the side there and it's just a little little snowman dude um so that was cool I was not expecting to get a free gift but I thought that that was awesome um I have found a couple places that are because I'm having to find places to replace Galloway's Gallery. Mad Reminders uh, is something that I've ordered from and I really like. And this one, Gina's Unique Boutique, has some really nice needle minders as well. So, 10 out of 10 recommend Gina's Unique Boutique on Etsy. Yes. Okay, 
one of the things, one of the two orders that I have gotten in this week, well, two and kind of, I'll talk about the third one in a minute. One of the two I have gotten this week, it's all folded in half, is this one, Tiny Modernist Christmas Stitch Along. This, whoa, this was a mystery stitch along series last year or the year before or something like that. So it's just called Christmas Stitch Along. Um, and this is what it looks like all stitched up. I think it is so cute. So cute. I love the border. I love all the little characters. I love the house in the background. I love that it says Merry Christmas on the bottom. I'm living for every single part of this. So I ordered it. <laughs> and 123 Stitch has stopped shipping them like where you get fabric in like those big bags they've stopped doing that and they put them in these like not they're not like Ziploc bags they're just like plastic bags that don't seal and it's making me really sad because now I'm having a really hard time kidding up all of my projects um and so this plastic bag was one that came with this order and it was really small so I had to fold this chart in half but it's fine I'm gonna have to fold it up anyway but um and I have so it just it has a little colored chart which is kind of cute um so it has it cut in half cut in half and then a full page with less color which is nice so you can choose which one you would like to stitch off of and that's that. I'm really excited. This is close up on the list um, because I want it up for Christmas. I want it either on my wall, depending on how big it's going to be. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Fabric comparable to 16. Okay, it's going to be about 8 by 10 when it's done. So I think it'll be too big for my mantle, but I want to hang it on the wall somewhere um, for Christmas. Because come the F on with that. Look at how cute it is. I love that. So this was model stitched on 32 count dove gray linen stitched over two. I could not find that on 123 stitch. So I found a substitute. This is from Witchell. This is a 32 count called Graceful Gray. And this is a 9 by 13 piece of fabric. It's just a plain, it's showing up almost kind of green. Probably because of the leaves outside. It's not green. It's gray. It's like a very, it's a nice light gray. It looks very similar to, to the picture. It's a nice light gray. I'm sorry if it looks green. Um, but it's a Witchell linen. Pretty much exactly what I'm working on right now. It is pretty see-through as you can see. So I'm going to have to be careful about like carrying threads and stuff. But we'll figure that out when we get there. And this is a, I think I said this, this is a 9 by 13 piece. So... It should fit like this sideways. It should be fine. And then I have all of the called for floss. Uh, a lot of it they didn't have at one, two, three stitch. There were like three or four colors they didn't have at one, two, three stitch. And I had to get them at Hobby Lobby. Um, but these are the called for. Aren't they pretty? It's all called for in DMC. So I just ordered all the called for DMC. Really pretty. I'm really excited to work on this. This is maybe, okay, let me think. This is like third or fourth in the in the list of things to do. I don't have exactly planned out, but this is like third or fourth in the list of like things that I'm going to work on next. So this will be coming up very soon and I'm very excited about it. Yeah, and I'm gonna frame it and hang it on my wall. That's my plan for how I'm gonna finish that. And there's just cross stitch and then a little bit of back stitch. Very easy. Mm, yeah. I think it's going to be really cute. This, Like I said, this was a three-part mystery series, but you can buy on 123 Stitch. They have the, they have each part, um, or you can buy the full chart on uh, Tiny Modernist Etsy shop, which is what I did. So I did the PDF download and then just printed it myself on cardstock and then one to, went to 123 Stitch and ordered everything that I needed for it. So... That's that. I am so excited that it is here. I am so excited to work on it. I think it's going to be a 10 out of 10 good time. Yeah? And so this is the tiny little Ziploc bag that I came in. And then the second one that I got is real exciting. 
because this I've talked to you guys multiple times about. I brought it up last week. It is one of my dream kits along with um, Bellatrix. This is probably my second like dream cross stitch. This is Raven Queen by Mirabilia. Yeah, let me take it out so that I can. Oh, sorry, I was sitting on my foot weird and now it's asleep and it's driving me crazy. There, you can see that much better. This is Raven Queen by Mirabilia. Yeah, um, I am not doing it on the called for fabric because 123 Stitch didn't have it. I'm doing the rest of it in called for except for it called for a Rainbow Gallery Whisper braid in W99, which was just black. And so I thought instead of using that, I'll just use 310. I don't know why not. Um, <laughs> it's used in the back stitch only. So I was like, I'll just use 310. Like what? So I just ordered an extra skein of 310 for that. And then I ordered DMC conversions for all of the Krynik braids. Um, and I have none of the beads. It calls for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different kinds of beads. No that would have been so expensive. So I'm gonna do French knots instead. I'll find like colors to fit all of those and uh, write the conversion when I have those colors and then we'll just do that instead. I haven't picked out the colors for the beads yet. I'll do that when I start the kit. But the rest of the conversion I have written down here. And then the rest of it was in DMC so I just have what it's called for in DMC. But oh my God, this thing, if you've never seen this stitched, it is massive, it is insanely detailed, and it is gorgeous, okay, gorgeous. Um, it's so large, in fact, that it comes on like two different pages, two different sheets of paper. And it was called for on a third, it was model stitched and called for on a 32 count touch of gray linen by Wichelt. Um, I, they didn't have that on 123 stitch. So I ordered, which I it's also by Wichelt. Um it's very soft though. I'm used to Wichelt fabric being very like crunchy. You know what I mean? Where it's very stiff. And this one's not. Um but this is a 32 count, it's a quarter yard of 32 count pearl gray Belfast linen. This is an 18 by 27 piece of fabric. That goes to show how big this is gonna be when it's done. Let me see if it says it's stitched two over two. Uh, it is nine by 17 when it's done. Large. <laughs> so nine across 17 long. She's a long one. So this is the gigantor piece of fabric. <laughs> it's huge. Um, but I'll fold it back up to show you the color that it is just a yeah, that's showing up decently true that it's a little bit of a medium gray. I wouldn't say it's a light, light gray like the like the one in Tiny Modernist is, like dove, no, not dove gray, graceful gray, um, but it's still a pretty light gray, which looks pretty similar to me on what it's called on. This sort of bluish gray, I think it's gonna look real good. I think it's gonna look real good. And see, it's like, I'm used to Wichelt fabric being so much crunchier. <laughs> but anyway, this is Wichelt, huge piece of fabric. Uh, very excited to work on this. And then I told you a little bit about everything that was called for, but I'll show you now. Um, most of it's just DMC. I have about a million skeins of black. And then I did order, it did call for some silks. This is my first time ever working with silk. Um, or ever touching silk. This is the uh, Karen Water Lilies. It called for three of them. And when I touched them for the first time, I went, that's why they call them silk. Because it, they are, they feel like silk. They are so soft because that's what they are. They're silk. I was just like, whoa. And I even went over to my boyfriend. I was like, babe, feel these. <laughs> anyway, this first one is uh, number 162, Periwinkle. Isn't that pretty? I usually like to, when they call for um, 
threads like this, they're usually kind of variegated. And so I like to just get them because it's hard to find a variegated um, substitute. And then it has, all of these have um, instructions on the inside for how to use it with needlepoint, how to use it with cross stitch, and then uh, for hard danger. So that's color 162 Periwinkle. This one is color 72 Midnight. Look at that. It's like this dark bluish purplish gray. Really pretty. It is mildly variegated. You can't see it very well in camera, but it is mildly variegated and so soft. Like I could pet these forever. Um, yeah, I was, this one is probably my favorite because it's super variegated and super pretty. This one is 197 Monsoon. Look at that. It's not even showing up as variegated on camera as it is in person. It looks so good. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, love that. Um, and then the rest that is in the package right now is DMC. So like I said, lots of blacks and grays. And then there's lots of colorful colors also. Um, I have yet to figure out where this color goes and where this color goes. I assume it has to be like her lips or something because like where? <laughs> but anyway, the one... Uh, the one thread, geez, <laughs> words, the one thread that I am still missing is it calls for a Krynic cable. Um, it is Krynic cable 002P, which if I remember right is gold. Um, and so I went ahead and just ordered it because it was like, I think $2 or something for it. So I was like, yeah, I'll just go ahead and order that. Um, because when it showed up, I was looking through all the colors and counting them. And I went, oh, I'm missing that one. So I just went ahead and ordered it. That's not here yet, but it is shipped. So it'll be here any minute. And then this will be fully kitted up and ready to go. I'm just missing that one thread. So yeah, this is probably going to not be worked on for a long time, actually, because... I got a lot of other stuff that needs to get done seasonally and this is something that doesn't need to get done seasonally and so um it'll probably be months until I work on this but that is that that is Raven Queen oh I was so excited when this came in the mail you should have been my boyfriend sitting next to me when I opened it and I screamed and I was pulling everything out and going oh my god look at the chart and oh my god look at the fabric and oh my god look at the thread and he was like yeah babe that looks great I'm like oh my god, it looks amazing <laughs> he uh, he tries so hard to be supportive he's like babe that looks amazing he has no idea but yeah, very excited. And this was one that did come in the, or actually I had one of these normal big bags that 123 Stitch used to send their fabrics in. Um, I had one of these left over, so I threw it in here. And then, that is all that I had like planned on ordering and had received in the mail, nothing crazy. And then there was this last thing that I have to show you. Um, this was very last minute. Plans have changed. I should, probably should have brought it out to show you. If you saw last week, I had plans to stitch. A, first of all, no, in a minute. I had plans to stitch from one of my, if you saw my flip through and then saw my last Halloween, or my last Halloween video, my last video, I talked about one of the pieces in there that I wanted to stitch and that I was gonna use it to hang on my front door like a sign on my front door, it said Happy Halloween. It was called on an orange fabric and it just had black and red. It just said Happy Halloween with a few spiders. It was very cute. And then I had even gone so far as to order the fabric for it. The night before the fabric shows up, before I get into that story, I had said in my last video that it was my plan that I was gonna stitch that next and then I was gonna stitch or no, wait, that I was, wait, <laughs> that I was going to stitch Happy Thanksgiving first from, uh, Happy Thanksgiving from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I forgot the name for a second. And then I was going to stitch Happy Halloween because that goes in the order of the holidays. Why did nobody correct me? That is not the order of the holidays. 
Halloween comes first and then Thanksgiving. I told him, I realized that one night and I told my boyfriend, I was like, I said that in a video. Why didn't nobody correct me? It's like, you guys must not have, must not have noticed it either because nobody corrected me when I said, when I was talking about how I'm going to do Thanksgiving first because Thanksgiving comes before Halloween. No, it doesn't. <laughs> anyway, I got that orange fabric in the mail. This is the fact, look, it's fluorescent. Okay. This is Weeks Dye Works um 32 count pumpkin linen in an 8 by 12 so it is cute little cute little piece of fabric um it is neon orange okay it is very bright and I was thinking about it the night before this fabric showed up I went well by the time I'm gonna be able to finish Raven get this stitched get it finished, hang it up on the door. Halloween is going to be over like, I don't know, maybe a week later, or if I'm even going to be able to get it done in time. And even so, if I do get it done in time, Halloween is such a short period of time that I'm not sure that actually makes sense. And so I scrapped that whole plan. I might stitch it at some point, but not this year. But I had this orange fabric. And I still wanted a sign for my door. And so I said, what is a Randa going to do? Randa decided that she wanted to find a, a similar pattern in terms of like something that it was going to be like a sign to hang on the door. That said something like hello fall or something about autumn, something that I could use up until Christmas. Um that would go good on this bright orange fabric. So what did Randa do? She hopped on Etsy and nothing was like stitched on a bright orange fabric that I liked, but I found something that I did like that I think is, that I still think now after pulling the flosses and everything is going to look good. This is Happy Fall by Cher, hold on. Yes, Cherry Hill Stitchery. That's what it looks like. Most of that's going to be fine on orange, right? If I were to pick it all over again, I wouldn't stitch it on orange, but I still think it's going to look good. Um, this pumpkin was my only concern, this big pumpkin in the middle. But I went, I, if anything, like I have white pumpkins all over my house. I can make that a white pumpkin and we'll be good. So I didn't want to go ahead. It has all this called for thread. It's called for in Weeks Dye Works and DMC. It has one, two, three, four, five Weeks Dye Works and three DMC. Um, and it's also, it's on a 28 count, but I did the math to, it's stitched on a 28 count, but I did the math to make sure and it definitely will fit on this piece of fabric. So we'll be good. Cause this is, like I said, it's an eight by eight, what, eight by 12. Yeah, it'll fit perfectly fine. I think it's like a five by something like it'll fit fine. Um, but of course I didn't want to go order the week's dye works in the DMC. So what did I do? I just went to my stash and I pulled some stuff out. So this is what I pulled. Here's the one thing is that I pulled it just to see, and I'll make the decision once I start stitching in. This is the color I pulled for that pumpkin. Um, this is to substitute sweet potato um, for, from Weeks Dye Works, it, it's close, that it's like, it's darker than the fabric, I think it would still show up, but it's close, and so instead, I pulled this cream color, it looks kind of yellow, it's not, it's not yellow, it's cream, uh, it's like an off-white to do for the big pumpkin, just in case, and then I pulled the rest of the colors and went, I think this is gonna look good, so let me do like a little floss drop, thing for you. So here's what I did. I pulled out my DMC chart because you guys know I have that chart that has all of the DMC colors and then a picture of it. Um, so I pulled out that chart and then I uh, did, I just, I found the DMC that it was called for and that it did and then found whatever was closest for it in my stash. And, um, and then I did a week's dye works to DMC conversion and then did the same thing. Took those DMC conversions from the week's dye works, um, you know, took the conversion color and then went to my chart and picked out a floss based on that. And this is what we have. 
So this is the color for the pumpkin that might be replaced with this. Otherwise, this is the rest of it. We've got like a dark red, a green, a sort of yellowy gold, a dark brown, a dark green, and then this sort of tanny gold color. I think it's going to look really good because none of the colors really clash. There. <laughs> and then I'm going to finish it as a sign and hang it on my door. I think it's going to look really good. So I might leave out this color completely and that might just be, that might be it. Either that or we'll see. Because I showed this to my boyfriend and he was like, oh, that color would show up on that fabric. I was like, I think so. But I don't know if that would look the best. So because I'm still indecisive about that, let me know. Do you guys think I should still do the pumpkin in this color or do you think I should do it in this color? Let me know. And then I'm also going to have to, you'll see there's like little lines in the middle of that pumpkin. I'm going to have to change the lines maybe to like this color or something. I'm going to have to pick something different for the lines because you can't have orange lines in the middle of a white pumpkin. It doesn't make any sense. But nonetheless, I still think that's going to look really good. So I pulled this, I bought this pattern for $5, already had the fabric, already had all of the floss. These are, this is a DMC that I already had in my stash from a past project. This is, I had a packet of floss that I used to use for when I made a lot of amigurumi plushies. I would use floss to like embroider a face, like embroider a smiley face. So the only colors I've used from that pack of floss is pink and black to make like noses and mouths on little amigurumi plushies, but it came with like every color in the rainbow. So I have a ton of these little no-name embroidery flosses from Walmart, Coates and Clark is the brand. Um, and they work, they're six strand floss. They work just like DMC. So I pulled one of those. And then all of these are also Coates and Clark. Right now they're on cardboard bobbins. I will be changing them to plastic bobbins when I kit them up, but this came in that box that I got from Walmart of a whole bunch of colors. I just pulled out, um, I just pulled out colors and then wrote all of the DMCs on them so that I know how to kit it up when it's time. The DMCs, and if it was a Weeks Dye Works conversion, it has the name of the Weeks Dye Works conversion. Um, and then I'll just throw these cardboard bobbins away when I kit them up because I hate cardboard bobbins, not happening. So that's that, which means plans have changed also that this is what I'm doing next. So once I'm done with Raven, this will be stitched and finished. I'm thinking for the finishing, I'm going to have it, I'm going to finish it on like some sort of board, maybe some sort of mat board or some sort of, I don't know, something along those lines. I'm just gonna wrap the fabric around it and finish it that way and then literally like you know those command strips that you use to hang up posters and stuff i think i'm gonna just command strip it to the door uh because i was thinking about having like tying twine to the top and have it hang like a sign but then i was like no then every time you open and close the door it's gonna fly and i could command strip it to the but then it just causes more it's like no just command strip it and be done um so i think that's what i'm gonna do and I have it, this was a, a little bag that came in some other package that I had ordered. It just like, it had stuff in a Ziploc bag. So I just stole it and put this in it and it works. Um, you could also get just like gallon Ziploc bags from the store and do it that way as well. It just makes me sad that they don't put those in their packages. I'm gonna petition to one, two, three stitch and be like, can you put Ziploc bags back in your packages please? Because I use them. Um, that's what's happening next. Hello Fall by Cherry Hill Stitchery. I'd never heard of Cherry Hill Stitchery. They have a bunch of cool, like cute little things that could be turned into signs like this. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go check them out. I found this from, it was a store on Etsy. It's called like Needle Case Goodies or something. Um, but they have a bunch of Cherry Hill Stitchery stuff, really cute. So that's the plan for what's happening next is this. And then it's getting hung on my door. Very excited. So once I'm done with Raven, I'll do this. Last but not least, um, purchases that I have made. I have not made a lot in terms of purchases. Um, 
I, I don't know. I, I've been in a mode where it's like, I have so much cross stitch. I do. I have so much. Um, and nothing has, not a ton has been like screaming to me, like you have to have it. And so I have sort of made the petition with myself that it's like, if you don't have to have it, don't and put that money into savings because I could use all the savings I can get. So trying to be smart. <laughs> and so that's what I'm doing. Um, so I, I have bought, like actually purchased one thing. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about was a pattern that I found in, I was as a subscriber of 123 cross stitch, 123 cross stitch, as a subscriber of just cross stitch magazine, my brain isn't working today. As a subscriber of Just Cross Stitch Magazine, I have not gotten my first physical copy, but you have access to a ton of them online. And so what I, I can't help myself, I've been flipping through the online magazines. And I found a pattern and it's a Christmas ornament. I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna use it as an ornament, just as like a little decoration, but it's this. It is Kitty's first Christmas. Come the F on. It is my cat's first Christmas. You know I'm doing that. You know I'm doing that. I'm changing out the orange. I'm going to change out the orange cat to be a gray cat to match my cat. And I'm going to put that somewhere. I don't know. I'm going to put it somewhere. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Kitty's first Christmas. Come the F on. Um, I don't have any fabric or thread for that yet. I'm just... I have the, the pattern. That's it. Um, I'll kit it up at some point. And then the thing that I actually purchased was this. This is Celtic Summer by Lavender and Lace. I've always loved the Celtic ladies. Um, I've loved them since I saw pictures of when Stitch Arista stitched them like a bajillion years ago. I love them. I think they're beautiful. And this one was in stock and I could get it for a decent price. Um, I don't, if it does come with beads, I didn't order any of them. I don't remember. What I do remember is that I ordered the fabric and the DMC. And possibly a few bring. I don't remember. I ordered Celtic Summer, okay? I'll show you when it gets here. It's on its way. And then I'm going to stitch it and hang it up in our house during summertime. Yeah, I love it. Don't you love it? I love it. I want to stitch all of the Celtic ladies. And I want to do... I want to do Stitcherista's um, Celtic Autumn conversion because Celtic Autumn is like purple and white and like it doesn't make any freaking sense to me. And I saw Stitcherista did a conversion when she stitched it with like oranges and reds and stuff and I went, that's Celtic Autumn. Um, and so I want to see, I want to message her at some point and see when I think of doing that and see if she still has the Celtic Autumn conversion. Um, or if anybody else has a Celtic Autumn conversion that does oranges and reds and stuff. Because Celtic Autumn as purple and whatever makes zero sense to me. So, um, but I want to do that eventually and then I want to do Celtic Spring and I think there's a Celtic... There's a Celtic Christmas I might do. I feel like there's more seasons I'm forgetting about. But either way, I'm doing Celtic Summer. I think it's gorgeous. I'm very excited to do it. So that I ordered, it has shipped, it is on its way. Oh, and one more purchase that I have to talk about is that I decided, because here's, <laughs> this is probably so bad for your fabric, and I bet it's so bad for your fabric, and you guys are going to yell at me. I have been tucking my access fabric up into the sleeve that goes on my Q-snap on all four sides to keep it out of my way, because I was noticing it getting hecka in my way. Um... And so I decided that I was going to order a grime guard to try to hold all of the fabric in so that it doesn't get in my way. And then it's not like going to be all folded and crazy wrinkled and awful because I feel like this is so bad for your fabric, right? Um, so I did. I ordered a grime guard. It was extremely hard for me to find a pretty neutral grime guard that I liked that wasn't shipping from the UK. And so shipping was a million dollars. I don't know why that was so hard for me to find. Um, but I did eventually find one, and this is it. This is from a shop on Etsy called Fat Girl Sewing. Um, she actually lives in the same state as me. This shop is located in Alamosa, Colorado. I'm in Denver, Colorado, so 
Uh, it works out perfectly, so it's just shipping north, and it'll be here soon. It has shipped out today, it shipped out this morning, and it will be here very soon. And I'm excited because I can just kind of, it's the kind of thing that I can kind of just put on any project, and yet it's still cute and that kind of stuff. So it's going to go on here so that I'm not abusing my fabric. Let me know if you know if this is fine or if this is really abusive to the fabric. Yeah, let me know what you think about that because... I bet it's pretty abusive to the fabric. Anyway, uh, that's kind of it for today's video. I told you guys it would be a little bit shorter. We're at 40 minutes right now. So a little bit shorter, but still 40 minutes worth of stitching goodies. That's pretty good. Um, so that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed seeing everything and what I'm working on and what my plans are and all of the many things. And I don't have any other videos planned for this week. So I will see you next week for next week's Whip and Chat. Um, I hope you guys are having a great week getting a lot of diamond painting done, a lot of stitching done, whatever it is you're working on. Let me know down below what you're working on. Also, if you want to see any links to like my shop or my wish list or anything like that, those are all linked down below as well under the campsite link. Uh, you can go check those out. And yeah, that's it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. And I love you all. Bye.